All right, today we're gonna to take a look at Tesla Cam Viewer version 2019.32. Uh, this is to fix the Tesla 24.4 issue with the encoding. Um, we're gonna first start off taking a look at how we do the install um, and then go from there on how we fix some of these files. So if we navigate over to GitHub, we can look at the Tesla Cam Viewer uh, webpage here. Uh, here we can download either the installer version or the standalone. I've already gone ahead and downloaded those. So here we can see on the desktop, uh, we have the standalone. So if we were to copy all these files, unzip it, you can throw it onto your thumb drive into a folder, say Tesla Cam Viewer, and now you always have a copy with you no matter what computer you have or what computer you go to. Um, we can now look at the installer. What we'll do is we'll run the setup option. We'll go ahead and do the install real quick. We're gonna select where we wanna install it. I'm just gonna install it to the normal default program folder. And now that we have it installed, we'll go ahead and launch it. All right, now that we have Tesla Cam Viewer installed, we're gonna take our Tesla Cam thumb drive and we're gonna insert it into our USB port. And one of the newer features is whenever we insert a new drive or remove a drive, it'll automatically update or refresh the Explorer window over here. <clears throat> so we can go through and we've already got Tesla Cam Viewer, the portable version installed, so we've always got a copy with us. And we can go and navigate into our saved clips folder. And from here we can go through and look at all of our saved events um, that the Tesla vehicle has saved for us. Um, so here's an example of one that um, currently is not playing. And this would be the 24.4 Tesla bug um, that we're going to fix. So what we can do is we can right click on a folder. We can click fix Tesla cam 2014.4 freezing bug. And that's gonna prompt us whether or not we want to temporarily save these files or if we want to permanently save them. Uh, temporary is yes, permanent is no, or we can cancel. So we're gonna temporarily save these. And these will get saved to a folder um, on your local OS drive. And when you close out Tesla Cam Viewer, they'll automatically be deleted. So we can see that we have 30 files that need to be converted. We just finished. So now we can see that we have a new folder added to the bottom of the folder tree. By clicking on the folder, we can now play the video. And we can see as this gentleman walks by that the vehicle detected a sentry mode triggered event and started recording. You can see the headlights flash, the rain's now moving, uh, it's not frozen. So that's how we fix the 24.4 uh, issue of freezing video. Now to go on to some of the other features of Tesla Cam Viewer, we can also move and customize some of these windows. So if yours doesn't look exactly like this, um, you can customize it however you want. We can select the top of any one of the window panes here and move them around. So if we want the left repeater over on the left hand side, we can click and drag and move it over there. If we want the Explorer window to be here in the middle instead and the front camera located down there, we can flip flop them. If we want the Explorer window over here and front camera there, so on and so forth, you get the idea. Uh, at the very top here, mine says archive Tesla cam. It's a custom folder um, that we can choose uh, where, we want to, um, where we want it to point to. So by right clicking, it'll prompt us to select a folder. And from there, we can go through, pick our archive folder or a location that you normally keep your saved Tesla cam files at. And it gives you a quick reference or quick access to those files for either playback later on in the future or to allow you to say right click, copy a folder, and then we can go and paste it into our Tesla cam folder. Um, so from here, let's go ahead and take this file. The second file down is where our sentry mode triggered event's gonna be. So we're gonna wanna select that folder. 
Um, if you wanted to select other files or other time frames, you can hold down shift or control and go through and select multiple times. Um, in this case, we're only interested in the triggered event that happens further down in here. So if the video was to freeze while we we're playing, that would be an indication of the 24.4 uh, bug. Or also if the time code here in the middle stops changing, um, that's also another, another indication as to the 24.4 bug. So from here, <clears throat> if we wanted to save or export this video, we can click export. And that's gonna give us some options as to how we want the layout of our final video to be uh, rendered. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll click the second option down here. We're, what we have is here in the middle is to swap left and right. And that's going to swap the left and right cameras if you decide that you would like to do that. Um, we're going to check mirror left and right. So that's going to mirror the image, um, what would be horizontally. And um, so that will put the two side mirrors butted up against each other as if we were looking out, say, the back window um, of the vehicle. We're going to select our video quality. We'll choose max in this case, and then we'll click render. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through and take the three files for the Tesla cam. It's going to create the view. It's going to add the time code, uh, the date stamp. And because we selected a, um, an event that had a century mode triggered event and we had the checkbox enabled, it's going to show us when that event happened uh, within the video file. So we'll let it complete here. All right, now that we're almost finished doing the rendering, the video has popped up. This is the render option for Tesla Cam Viewer. And what it allows us to do is uh, trim up or select certain events uh, of the file that we wanna see. So we know our sentry mode triggered events towards the very end of the file. And so what we can do is we can move our end marker, so where we wanna start the video, down a little further. And if we hover then over the video here, once it catches up, So here we go, we can see the guy walk by. So we can adjust our end marker. We'll say we'll put it about there. Um, we'll put our start marker about there. And now we can see we have the century mode indication right before when it's about to happen. So it kind of prepares us or lets everybody else know that something's about to happen. And then from there, we can click Save As and select a folder that we want this file to be saved in. Um, up to this point, nothing is saved. Um, you'll have to click the Save As to permanently save it to your computer. All right, let's go over some of the other features that's uh, new to Tesla Cam Viewer. If we click the little gear down here in the very bottom, we can see that uh, we have the option to choose different languages now. Uh, we have English, Spanish, German, and Dutch. Uh, we can also select to download the uh, newest version. It'll take us directly to the GitHub website. Uh, there is a view stats option here that allows us to um, see kind of our statistics on how we're using Tesla Cam Viewer and allows me to kind of track uh, not only usage, but uh, any bugs that come along in the system. Um, we've got a link to GitHub, a link to Twitter, a link to Instagram. Um, here is a link to report a bug. Um, so if there was an issue um, where something keeps on happening and you want to report it, you can click on that. There's also a feedback if uh, you think the app's great or if you want to see uh, new improvements or features, um, you can click feedback. Donate just takes you to the PayPal link so you can donate if you'd like. And then under about, it's going to show us what version of the software we're running. Uh, not only does it show it at the very top of the window, but it shows it here. Um, it's also gonna let us know uh, what our PC ID is. Um, I've went ahead and changed mine, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But what the PC ID is, is the CPU's ID. Um, it's nothing 
uh, random. Uh, it kind of specifies what processor you're using um, and, and a few other key indications of the processor. Uh, and then we have the motherboard CPU serial number. Um, that's semi-random. Um, not all manufacturers will put a serial number um, in this location. Um, so as we're looking through some of the statistics here, you'll see what I'm talking about. So under view statistics or view stats, we can see that we can change our custom ID. So by clicking on the window, you can type in whatever you want. If you were to leave it blank and click enter, then it will set it back to the generic uh, default custom ID or user ID. Um, by entering something else and clicking enter, you can then set your own custom ID. All right, we're going to take a look at the stats section now. So what we'll do is we'll click on view stats. And this is going to take us to a uh, Google Docs um, link. And from here, we can see on the spreadsheet um, some statistical information about Tesla Kim Viewer and how users are using it. Um, you'll be able to do a quick find um, by holding down Control and F to then search for your ID. Um, your ID gets copied automatically whenever you go to select view stats. So from here, we can see that Tesla Kim Viewer has been used 266 times by 475 unique uh, PCs. Uh, within the last week, it's been used 195 times. And within the last two weeks, it's been used 320 times. Uh, we can also see when the first date that user uh, downloaded and installed Tesla Cam Viewer. Uh, we can also see when the last date that user has used Tesla Cam Viewer and how many files have been viewed. Let's go ahead and look at the raw data. So we can see exactly what gets sent over every time you close out Tesla Cam Viewer. So the date stamp is uh, automatically put in by Google Docs. Um, then we send over the PCID, and that's what I talked about earlier as the um, semi-unique uh, PC or CPU ID, um, all based off what CPU you're using. And then appended on to the end of that is the uh, motherboard serial number. Um, not all the times does that get entered. Sometimes it's listed as default string or to be entered by OEM or left blank, um, there's quite a few options. So um, it, there could be duplicates of uh, multiple users. Uh, the chances of it are semi-slim, but it's a possibility. Uh, we also send over what version of the software you're currently using. We send over what today's date is, um, and that's when you go and close the program, what date was on your computer at the time. Uh, we can look at the number of minutes that the um, application was open for, the number of clips that were viewed, along with the number of clips that were saved, any links that were clicked within the, um, the viewer itself. Um, we get some information as to um, if it was the first time running the application or if this was an updated. Um, otherwise, it just normally leaves it blank if you just use it on a uh, normal basis. Uh, crash report, um, this is what helps me out to determine what issues you guys are seeing um, either at your house or viewing Tesla Cam Viewer uh, or the Tesla Cam files. So if there's an issue and it crashes, it will send me the crash log, um, which is just some basic information as to uh, what part of the application crashed and, and what the bug was. Um, we also collect the local time zone, so I get a general idea of where in the world you are, um, and that's as close geographically as the information that I'll be able to know. Um, your PCID is semi-random, there's nothing trackable on that, um, and your time zone is only based off what your computer is set as, and it's a large geographical range. Um, we can also see what layouts were chosen for rendering or saving videos. We can see what language was selected. And we can also see what the old PCID versus what a custom new PCID uh, would be if you decide that you would like to have changed it. 
So going back to the stats section here, once the page loads, we can look and see um, those time zones that I was talking about. That's going to be the third graph located on the bottom of the page. Or we can see here, here is all the different time zones and how many times the viewer has been used in those particular time zones. So it's just some um, useful information for me and um, for you guys to get a general idea of how often the application is used, um, what kind of response and uh, what kind of issues you know people are having. So if there was a particular user that kept saying, "Hey, we've got we're seeing issues, so on and so forth," or it doesn't work for me. Um, I know that the application is working now because I can see that only 4.8 of 4.8% uh, of the users that have installed it have come up with a crashed um, program or you know the program had a bug or something like that causing the program to crash. Um, just gives me a, a general better understanding as to what's going on with the application. So that's Tesla Cam Viewer and version 2019.32. So if you have any feature requests or uh, any bugs or issues, um, go ahead and report them, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for more feedback. If you like the program, um, there's the donate button, not only on GitHub, but within the application. Uh, I really appreciate it. All of the people that have donated so far, it's greatly appreciated. It's helped out a lot. Thank you. And um, if you like this video, uh, make sure you share it and subscribe. Um, I keep putting out videos um, about once a month or so, just some my updates how to use Tesla Cam Viewer, other programs or other things that I'm working on um, will also get published here. And uh, you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye.